Today I'm going to take the interior out of this E30 so I can see the floor pan from the inside and we can weld up any rust holes without setting fire to the whole project. So in the last episode I cleaned the underside of the car and I found various rust patches including a very nasty rust hole at the front right in the driver's side footwell. In order to fix this stuff, I'm going to have to strip out this interior and store it somewhere safe out of the car so that we don't actually set fire to it or damage it in the process of grinding and welding. I do have a rough idea of how this all goes together and I've had the interior out of the rear before so I know what I'm doing there. But regarding taking the whole carpet out, I've never actually done that. So follow along and bear with me on that. I think I'm going to start by taking out the two front seats. That should be nice and straightforward. So let's get let's get on with it. Right, these are a 17. With the front seats out, I'm now just going to whip out these front footwell speaker grill covers which is just held in with one Phillips screw. Now there'd also be a knee roll here normally, which is something that's dropped off previous on mine and I've actually got that stored away elsewhere so it's missing, but that's quite easy to remove and quite obvious if yours has one as well. These front speakers have definitely seen better days. I'm definitely going to have to replace those at some point. They're literally rotted away. And on this side, you just need to be aware of the bonnet release lever as well. That needs to come off. Ladbrokes, probably from the 90s. Classic.
the center console was easy enough to remove. And the only thing really in the way over here now are these cables, which I actually think are speaker wires. They go over the carpet here and underneath here, so there's no real way of avoiding it. So I think they all they'll all plug into the back of the head unit, I hope. So I'm going to pull this forward, unplug them, and then we can continue down in the pedal area. Now those of you who know these old single din head units know they'll be clipped in on either side for security reasons and there's two special tools that you can push in that release the latch so that you can pull the whole unit out forward. I don't have any of those unfortunately so I'm going to have to get a bit creative. I think I've got a good idea about how I'm going to take it out. Let's see if it works. like magic. So the wiring for an aftermarket head unit always ends up being a rat's nest to be honest. I've taken a picture of this so I've got a fighting chance of actually getting it back together correctly once everything goes back in. But for now I'm just going to work out which wire leads to here, they don't match in colour, unplug them and that will enable me to remove this wiring and continue. So on the passenger side, the only thing holding this side of the carpet in now is this uh, door seal trim, which I can get to slide, but it doesn't seem to want to come away from its clips. I'm quite concerned about breaking those, to be honest, because I know they're hard to replace. Um, I read online that I should be able to sneak the carpet underneath that instead of removing it, and hopefully be able to put it back as well in the end. So that's what I'm going to try and do instead. So let's try and uh, finesse that out of here. Easier than I expected. So now I need to take out the throttle pedal. These are notoriously awkward to take out, partly because they're very easy to break because actually it's just a piece of plastic that flexes there as you press it down. Now, the way this works is it, there's an L-shaped bracket welded onto the floor pan of the car and this throttle pedal is clipped onto it with two latches at the front, I believe, and one at the back. To show you what I mean, I've just wedged some screwdrivers in to try and hold the carpet down. Now you can see in there the, the way they're clipped in, you can kind of see anyway. Now I need to push one of them through from the back and then pry the two out at the front and then it should lift up off the L-shaped bracket. There it is. Now the pedal's out, I can show you what I mean a bit better. There's the L-shaped bracket that's welded onto the floor pan with the three holes in it that I mentioned. And on the pedal side, what you need to do is prise these tabs outwards and then push the one from the front through here, 
push it that way and then you should be able to pull upwards and the pedal will come out. And this is just a circlip at the top. So that's the throttle pedal removed. Now, when you see people taking out carpets, you often see them slicing the carpet all the way along here in front of where the gear knob had come out. That must be something to do with the with people who have the gear knob still in place, and we don't in this car, because the engine and gearbox was removed previously. I'm not sure though, because to be honest, I think it would fit over, but that might be something to be aware of if your gear knob is still in place. Now, I can't really see much else that's holding this carpet in at this point. There is the steering column that seems to go through the carpet, which I might need to make a cut so it'll go around it, because I have no intention of taking that steering column out right now, partly because of security bolts and I'd rather not get into battle with them. Um, other than that, there's a clip at the top there, and the glove box was removed in the previous episode, but I can't remember any reason why that glove box would have been holding the carpet in, and there doesn't look to be anything else holding the carpet in either. So I reckon once I've cut round the steering column, and I've pulled it off that bracket, I should be able to yank the entire carpet out. Let's find out. <laughs> so here's where the steering column comes through the carpet. I think I'm just going to cut it here uh, rather than doing a, a long slice at the top because I think one, it'll be easier and two, it'll I mean the carpet can hook around this steering column and pre prevent it from sliding down when it's reinstalled. So let's give that a cut now. Very easy to cut it turns out. Looks like I was right about the steering column, that was the only thing that wasn't going to come out without a cut. Everything else just slid out. This seemed to be in really tight behind the heater box, but with a bit of brute force and ignorance, the whole thing came out and that was that. Worked out pretty well actually. To take the remaining piece of carpet out is actually a doddle, you just need to pop up the rear seat. Like this. And it hooks over. So that's the seat and the carpet out of the E30 now. I've never taken the, a carpet out the whole way from one of these before and actually it wasn't as bad as I feared so it's a reasonable job for you to take on yourself. The good news is I haven't actually found any unexpected horrors under here. It's actually really quite solid, in fact like new, which isn't bad considering none of this will have seen the light of day since before I was born. The only parts that really need attention then are just the front jacking points which I already knew about from the previous episode. So with that carpet out of the way I'm no longer worried about any fires so I can get back to that. Anyway if you've found this useful please feel free to give us a like, feel free to subscribe but thank you very much for watching.